The jaws on these lumber forks can grip 50 tree trunks at a time. This is one of Ireland's biggest exports at the moment, wood from state-owned forests. The Murrays have been in the timber business for almost a century now. But Patrick and his son John worry about the future. Their concern, foreign investors could buy up the timber and ship it unfinished, bypassing the sawmills. As they see it, government plans to sell off woodland to reduce debts is the wrong way to go. Ireland has very few natural resources. One of those is its land and what it grows on its land, be it farming, be it dairy, or be it forestry. And I think it is a backward step to, to relinquish that to, to, to the Troika. The Murrays aren't the only ones worried. Ireland's forests don't just provide timber. They're used recreationally as well. Here in the Dublin mountains, responsibility for maintaining the public footpaths lies with Quilta, the Irish Forestry Commission. We've got an appointment with Carl Boyle, head of Mountaineering Ireland. He's outraged at the privatization plans. I do not believe that a private pension fund, for example, or whoever comes in to try and take over this uh, the, and purchase these crops is going to be willing to invest in recreation like Quilta has and, and Quilta will continue to. You know, it's hugely important that we maintain uh, this amenity, this public good for the people of Ireland and those that come to visit here as well. Wherever environmentalists gather in Ireland at the moment, like this conference in Dublin, the proposed sale is top of the agenda. But economists like Alan Matthews view the issue quite unromantically. He says Ireland's huge debts make unpopular decisions necessary. Timber was planted as a commercial crop in this country. We're going to, uh, we're going to cut down the timber when it is uh, mature anyway. Uh, so the question is, uh, does it make sense for the state uh, to bring forward uh, the sale of those, uh, the, the, the revenue from the sale of those, uh, that asset, the timber? Uh, when we need it, uh, rather than wait for the 20, 30, 40 years before that timber is, is mature. The trade union Impact says that's just naive. They've commissioned their own study and its conclusion is devastating. If the state forestry harvesting rights are gone, they're gone for 80 years and we will have had a return of three weeks worth of interest repayment. I fail to see how we can begin uh, economic recovery if among the assets we've lost is a profitable state company that returns substantial tax revenue to the Exchequer uh, every year and where we would see the profit generated by that asset actually leaving the country. Economically dubious and politically controversial. Many Irish ask why they should saw off the branch they're sitting on. Is it the pressure of Troika, of, of, of the EU, of indeed maybe even the German Chancellor? And, and this is a question that has to be asked. The Irish people are entitled to their amenities, to their public goods. And it's unfair, it's wrong if there are others outside of this state making decisions which is going to have a negative impact on the people of Ireland. Patrick Murray agrees with that sentiment. The forests are more to him than sources of raw materials for his sawmills. His grandfather felled timber here for the state. He felled that in 1923 and it was replanted and my father felt it in the, felled it in the 1960s and it was replanted and I felt it, felled it in the 1990s and it was replanted and it's now grown again so hopefully my sons will fell it the next time. The Irish taxpayer is still profiting from this timber. There's no green light for the sale yet. Still, one thing is clear. The timber from the green hills of Ireland is more than a raw material.